I've been on the phone so long that I forgot what I was calling about. And then when the representative comes on, I'm like, give me a second because you have me on hold so long, I need to figure out what I was even calling you for. You're thinking about getting into medical billing? Well, here are the duties that I completely hate in medical billing. If you're interested in seeing that, then please keep watching. Hi guys, Tamika here again. Welcome or welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be discussing the duties that I hate as a medical biller. But before we jump into that, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about why I started this channel. It kind of links into these duties. So I started this channel because I was doing some research on YouTube. I would, you know, type in medical billing, medical biller, and all I would ever see is medical coding. There are some videos that speak about medical billing. A lot of them speak about medical billing in a hospital setting, which is kind of the same. It's not exactly the same, but it is kind of the same. But I think we need a little bit more representation when it comes to medical billers because there are a lot of medical billers out there. There are coders and there are billers, there are billers and coders. So I just think we need a, a lot more representation. But I started this also, this channel also, because I, every time I hear about medical billing, people always tend to have this idea that it's just the easiest thing that makes you all the money. Now I've said this in a past video that that is just not true. Yes, you can make a lot of money. Yes, it may be simple. I don't like to use the word easy. It may be simple, but it just doesn't happen overnight. If you're not educated, if you don't have too much experience, not that you need all the experience, but you do need to know what you're doing. You need to have an idea of what to do. And especially if you're thinking about trying to open up your own medical billing business. If you're working in an office, they sometimes do tend to train you, um, let you know, you know what to do. They kind of help you with the duties and stuff like that. But if you're just deciding to jump into medical billing without any experience, you're going to have a business. I'm not saying that you can't do it because if you put your mind to anything and you work hard at it and you do what you, your research, you do what you have to do, you can do it. But it's not just that easy. It's not going to fall in your lap, you know, boom, I have all this money. The job is easy and nothing's ever going to go wrong. So that's not how it's going to work. And I want to be able to put my two cents in because I'm actually doing it. I have been doing it. And I just want you to know the pros and the cons, the good and the bad, you know, help you out with any questions that you have. Please subscribe to this channel. If you're interested in medical billing, I will maybe be mentioning a little bit of medical coding because they do relate to each other, but this is a medical billing channel. It is not medical coding. Like I said, I'll answer some questions here and there, but mainly it will be medical billing. So if you're interested in opening a business in just getting a job as a medical biller, then this is the channel for you. So please subscribe, like this video and share it with others that you think this can help. The channel is here to give you the realistic view. Some people make it seem very easy and simple and whatever, but there are things that you need to know. And today we're going to be discussing the things that I completely hate about medical billing. So let's start off with the simplest duty that I hate, and that is filing. Oh my goodness, I hate to file. I don't care if it's charts, if it's papers, EOBs, whatever, I completely hate to file. I will let the stack of charts, the stack of papers, the EOBs, whatever it is, I will let it pile up and pile up and pile up until I'm like, girl, get it together and file away these papers, file away these charts. I don't know why I hate filing so much, but for the most part in certain places that I've worked before, the front desk would file away charts or, you know, file away other paperwork. There are some things that I still need to file away. If I pull a chart, I'm not going to leave it for somebody else to 
to put away. I pulled it, I should put it away. So I really try not to do that. But girl, anytime I could get somebody else to file, I do. I don't know why it's such a bother, but that is one of the duties. You might not have filing as your duty, but I think in anything that you do in medical billing, you might have some form of filing that you need to do. And that's one of the things that I just totally, totally hate. The second duty that I hate as a medical biller is calling insurance companies. Now, if you want to fall asleep, if you want to forget what you were calling about, if you want to just have a neck crook, um, then call an insurance company. Especially now because of the whole COVID situation, these insurance companies have you on hold like crazy. Like, sometimes you'll be on hold. I mean, sometimes, don't get me wrong. Sometimes they're quick, it's fast, it's 10 minutes, five minutes, you're on and off the phone. But sometimes, I have been on the phone for two hours, two hours. And, you know, you might be like, I've been on the phone so long that I forgot what I was calling about. And then when the representative comes on, I'm like, Give me a second, because you have me on hold so long, I need to figure out what I was even calling you for. Because for me, I'm not just gonna sit on hold without doing something else. If I don't have anything else to do, then maybe I just might sit there, like I said, fall asleep, something. But for the most part, I'm gonna be multitasking. I'm gonna be posting payments, I'm gonna be um, filing, I'm gonna be doing something else that can occupy my time and be more efficient with my time. Because just sitting on hold, it might even just be for one patient, which is another tip I can have for you, is when you call an insurance company, try to call and have several patients. Don't call once and then, you know, you call Cigna for one patient and then 30 minutes later, you have to call Cigna again for another patient. Try to get them all together, if it's two, three, four, so at least you can use your time efficiently and just not be sitting there wasting your time on the phone. So that's another tip with calling insurance companies. The first one is multitasking, and second one is making sure it's more than one patient that you're calling about, unless it's just one patient, and if it's just one patient, then it's just one patient. But yeah, I totally hate calling insurance companies, and sometimes they catch me on good days, and you know, I'm okay with it, and they like to ask you to enter in your information in the IVR, and then they, we ask you the same information when you speak to a representative. Some days I'm good, I answer the questions. Other days I'm like, look, you wasted my time already. Can you please just tell me the information? I already put it in the IVR and I need you to just speed this process up. I try not to be rude, but sometimes they take me there and that's that. So insurance companies calling them is one of the tasks I can pass along to someone else. Get me back in when I need to maybe explain why you need to pay for something, why you know you need to reprocess the claim. Put me back on at that time. But when it comes to being on hold, waiting, um, entering information in the IVR, repeating yourself about patient's information, I can pass that duty to someone else. And the last and final duty that I hate as a medical biller is trying to find the guidelines for billing for a specific insurance company. Now, I've said this before several, several times, I've been doing this for a while. And so I kind of know, especially in a specific specialty, I know where to look for certain things. But these insurance companies be playing games, y'all. They don't, the, the bottom line is they don't want to pay you. And so they're gonna try every way that they cannot pay you and they'll tell you, oh, well, we don't cover this. Look at this guideline and we don't cover that. So then I'll say something like, okay, well, could you point me to the right guideline? Can you tell me, oh, we can't tell you what to bill. We can't show you. And I'm like, okay, I didn't ask you to show me how to bill. What I did ask you for is the guideline because although you will use for the most part, the guidelines that's in the CPT handbook or the ICD-10 handbook, You'll use those guidelines, but different insurance companies have their own guidelines. Also, for the most part, 
Medicare is who most insurance companies follow after. So if, for instance, let's say Medicare doesn't pay for consultations any longer. And so they were the first ones and then slowly but surely other insurance companies started to not pay for consultations. But you need to know which insurances do and which insurances don't. They'll tell you, look at their guidelines. Okay, where can I find your guidelines? You're searching high and low for these guidelines that they say they have and you can't find them. It really irritates me because if you're telling me that you don't cover something, if you're telling me you want something built specifically, then you should have something in place where I can easily find it and then do what you want me to do. But of course they don't want that so they're gonna run you around and they're gonna tell you, oh, I can't tell you how to bill and oh, you just need to look at the guidelines and oh, and then you try and look at these guidelines and you can't find anything. That is my biggest hate of billing for medical billing. So then you have to try to find, um, you know, how much supposed to bill it. You might have to ask other billers. You might have to really do some digging and some research. Thank God for Google. Although, check yourself with Google because Google is, you know, it has good information, but then it has people just telling you wrong things. So you kind of have to see if you're getting this from a um, reputable source and you just really need to make sure that you're getting your information correct. So where I live in the US Virgin Islands, we have representatives for the specific insurance companies that we are considered in network with. I assume that's the same way in the United States and other parts. So you usually have a representative that you can speak to. I have become really close with all the representatives for Cigna and Blue Cross Blue Shield and United Healthcare and all those people. So sometimes when I really dig and dig and dig and I cannot find a guideline, I would call them up and they would help me out. <clears throat> sometimes you might get a representative who does not want to help you. For the most part, I've been lucky and I think we have formed a relationship and so it's just not, you know, they don't know me. They, I mean, I've been in this game for a little while now, so they kind of know me. And so we help each other out and they help me out with guidelines. But trying to find the guidelines for certain insurance companies are crazy. And don't even talk about medical assistance because that's another one. They tell you about guidelines and what they follow and then they change it up on you. They switch it up. And you have to be on your game to figure out what is the right guideline from what is not the right guideline. That's another part of this whole medical billing thing. But that is the three duties that I hate as a medical biller. Now, of course, it's what I have to do and I'm going to do it. I have been doing it, but the longer I can probably procrastinate and have somebody else do it, if I could pass along some duties to someone else, those will be the three duties that I pass along as a medical biller. Let me know if you have any duties that you hate as a medical biller, or if you're not doing medical billing, do you understand, you know, or agree with my duties that I hate as a medical biller? It depends on what you're doing. You can have different parts in medical billing and you might not have to file or you might not have to call insurance companies if you're only doing payment posting. So it's just up to the duties that you have. But since I do all of them, then everything falls basically under me. So I hope that was helpful. I do videos every Saturday and some Wednesdays. So please come back and join me on the next one. If you guys have any questions, please leave them below. I can do videos for them and I hope they can help you out. So I will see you in the next video.